Hey everybody, Mega Ruler 31 back here for FSI DFS. Got the camera working today. Uh, strange night in baseball yesterday, and um, you know, one of our viewers was um, very astute to point out that uh, last um, five slates or so, the top end pitching has just not paid off. And you know, I, I played Burns last night, had a pretty good share of them, and so did many other people. He's 70% owned, so I don't think that was the wrong play. I mean, Gosselin got um, scratched, and I said that I was a really huge fan of Radon against the San Diego team. But um, what kept me in, it was O'Neill's two home runs and the rest of the guys that I had in my uh, St. Louis lineup, they put up 12 runs there. So um, that was quite decent. I did call the Otani home run in a GPP. So overall, I um, had about a mid-cash, minimum cash night. Um, so it wasn't a total loss, you know, once you have like that much ownership on a pitcher that struggles. So just kind of a, a crazy, crazy um, thing. I avoided um, having because I had like so much angel ownership, I avoided having Montas as my SP too. So that helped out a little bit too. So I'm um, in cash. So uh, today we've got a lot of good pitching here and I'll try to break it all down at this point. Uh, I'm, I have like the pricing list from, from DK, but I can't really build lines on it. They're doing maintenance and FanDuel doesn't have the slate up yet because I'm doing it so early in the morning. So I apologize for that. So um, check back to the video at the end and or not at the end, but like probably um sometime this afternoon. And I will make sure that I post um, my thoughts on the, the pictures I'll take in some of the core plays that I have from uh, DK or FanDuel. So uh, let's just break down these games quick. So first game, we have Oakland and Washington, Cole Irvin and Eric Fetty. Um, Irvin's been pitching well recently, going about six innings, had like 11 strikeouts the last time out. So Nationals are a great matchup for him. Fetty on the other side, um, I don't like as much, but I think could uh, probably be in play if you're looking for a cheap pitcher. It's supposed to rain here today. I don't know if they get this game in. We're looking at like 70, 80% chance. So, and then the bats, I think Oakland and Washington are just cheap fill-ins for bats. Next up, we have the Cubs and the Blue Jays, Stroman and Gossman. Um, not interested in Stroman. He's a ground draw pitcher and, and does really well against righties, which the Blue Jays are pretty much a right-handed lineup. Gossman on the other side, I really, really like him in the, the medium range at 8-7. I think he's my favorite um, pitcher in that range there if you're um, – ping in, in the mid range and might be a great candidate for an SP one. If we're avoiding the high price guys, like, um, you know, who burned us in the last couple of slates and there's several issues with them. So, you know, we'll get to that when we get to them. Stroman, the other side, not interested at all. Cubs. So uh, it'd only be probably a leverage stack. Cause I think Gosselin is going to get some ownership here as an SP two. Um, I think people go no SP one. And Gossman or Kirby is probably going to be the default SP2. So um, they'd be leverage stack. And Toronto, I have them as the second stack just because, like, looking at the totals right now, as things stand, they have, like, one of the second highest one on the slate. But I think I'd only stack them. I don't think I'd really make them a huge priority here. Um, if Because it's really hard, actually, to pay up today and get two decent pitchers because um, there's uh, – some value and it's all on Minnesota, it seems pretty much. So we'll get to that when we get to that, but um, not super interested in the blue Jays here um, as a <clears throat> one-offs or anything like that. If you want to stack them, I think they're okay. Borderline cash, but I think more of a GPP play. Seattle and Detroit Kirby against Manning. Manning's been better recently, but I'm still not um buying it i want to see a little bit more the guy's super talented um everything points to him being a great pitcher down the road i think you know but i think he's still got a little bit more to uh learn maybe he just needs to get another team with a better pitching coach or something um detroit doesn't just seem to have that it's just somebody to work with him develop him maybe get a good veteran arm with him there just to show him some stuff so but so i'm not sold on manning today kirby i really really like um and, and I have no problem stacking like Gossman and Kirby and, and cash as your, um, as your uh, build there, just to play two mid range guys who are really solid against and decent matchups here. So Seattle, I, I like um, as a top stack, but again, they're like expensive against Manning and then Detroit. I'm not interested at um, they just be in the 150 max leftover bin. 
Uh, we have the Dodgers and the Mets. A little bit of rain here potentially. It only looks like about 50% chance, so I should be able to get this game in. Heaney, not interested in. Mets are a patient offense. Don't really um, strike out much, and Heaney doesn't go deep in the game. Tijon Walker is very risky here. I have him in the no interest, not the fade column, because he has had some solid outings, and the Dodgers – from time to time can uh, cool off. He's in the pitcher's park. Um, the wind is blowing out at 11 miles per hour here. So I don't know. I just think both pitchers are risky here. The Dodgers, I think, make a good GPP stack just because Walker has been decent and the Mets, um, the same thing, but a little bit more down, uh, down the line. Next up, we have Colorado and the Braves, Urania and Max Reed. Urania is just not a good pitcher, so not playing him against Braves. Braves have the highest total on the slate. Max Freed, I think he's a good real life pitcher for DFS. Like he's got some good outings. I think he'd probably get anywhere from maybe 18 to 22 DK points someplace in there. So he should be really good against this Colorado team, even though they're better against left-handed pitching earlier in the season, the, They've just cooled off against them. They have in guys out of the lineup that made that a better team there, like Chris Bryant. So um, I think Freed's in play here, but I don't know if I want to pay up for him for 9-9 in the slate system with Gossman and Kirby, just such good options there. So uh, Braves are a top stack. Um, I, I did try to play around with this a little bit. So if I take Gossman and Kirby, I can get some Braves in there with a Minnesota stack because the Minnesota pricing is just so – really low today they're in a really really good spot Rocky's not touching them uh Red Sox and Twins Cutter Crawford and Chris Archer not interested in either one here I mean like maybe Cutter Crawford at 5-5 five, five, he probably can pay off his price tag there I know Minnesota, and I think it's more of like a leverage play because I think people are gonna play a lot of Twins because you kind of have to to get anybody in um bat wise Archer on the other side doesn't go really, really deep in the games. Like he's just out there as like a serviceable pitcher for them just to take like the fifth spot in the rotation. So not um, the Red Sox, I know I've struggled, but they're starting to get healthy again and the wind's blowing out again. So at, at any point, this offense can come alive. So Minnesota is one of my favorite cheap stacks. Milwaukee's still a little bit better matchup against Pittsburgh and, and some better players there. So they'd be number one, but Minnesota would be number two, especially with, um, you know, Gordon and Cave at, at 2K and even Kepler at 3 1. Like there's nobody over 4 7. That's Korea. He's the highest priced player. This, this, is, this is your value team right here. And it's a decent value team like, in a good matchup in a good park with wind blowing out. So against a marginal pitcher. Uh, Red Sox on the other side, again, would be just a stack and a GPP. Like they fall 10th in line here. Actually, it'd probably be 12th because I played Milwaukee and Minnesota over them. Houston and Texas, uh, Valdez and Dunning. Valdez has been good this season, but I don't know. 10-1 is, I, I, I think you're really only looking at somewhere between like 15 to 17 DK points for him. So uh, Dunning on the other side, not as you say, I guess this Houston team, it's a bad matchup. So Houston, I mean, the stack's very expensive here. You've got two guys in the 5K range and 4K. I mean, the rest of it's, everywhere else is like under 4K here. So like Mancini's like at 3.8 and Pena's at 3.5 and, you know, Gurriel at 2.8, Durbin at um, 2K flat, Maldonado 2.2 catcher. So, I mean, you can make it work here. Um, again, if the rains, if Atlanta gets rained out for some reason and, you know, not really keen on, on Toronto, maybe they would come into play as one of the top stacks um, in cash here. And Texas on the other side, I'm just not um, – I think there should be a leverage stack against Valdez if he does have some ownership. But I just think Valdez is a GP he only. It's just, just the pricing. They're not paying 10K for him in the context of the slate when I have some other pitchers in the 8K range I think could match him and score or exceed him. And like I said, Texas, um, again, would just be uh, a leverage stack. Okay, Royals and the White Sox. We have Singer and Giolito. Um, Singer, I really, really like here against White Sox. They kind of struggle. Giolito, these two guys are another solid guys. The mid range, not interested in any of the bats. Brewers and um, Pirates, not interested in Mitch Keller or Jason Alexander. Um, I'm not chasing Pittsburgh from last night, but I have seen Jason Alexander really, really struggle. So I think um, Cruz and some of um, the Pittsburgh bats might be in play here. They'd be my third favorite cheap stack. And then Milwaukee is definitely my favorite cheap stack.
Yankees and Angels again, Tyone and Myers. Tyone struggled, so I think the Angels definitely make a good GPP stack. Um, maybe Trout gets back on the home run train today, so I'll definitely have some Angels exposure. Yankees, same thing. Um, I think they make a top stack against this Mike Myers. Uh, he looks okay. Um, I think you could play him in the cheap range because the Yankees have had their struggles, and um, he's a newer pitcher that they haven't seen yet. But um, – the Yankees, I think, again, you, you can play them, but they're expensive. I think mean, Cabrera really helps out, but he's up to like 3K. I liked him when he was like more minimum price. So I think I'm not really looking um, too much at either one of those teams today. But I do think that the Angels um, could be sneaky against Talion. Philly and Arizona, you have Nola and Gallon. Both pitchers are really, really good here. Philly's been really strong recently, so Gallon's kind of risky, but I think um, he'd be – I could think he's still in play if you wanted to play him in a GP. I wouldn't play, touch him with cash. Nola, if you want to pay up for him, but Arizona's going to match him with a lot of lefties. And I think he should be okay. But then again, like I said, it's just paying 10 6 and just seeing it not pay off when you have Gossman, Kirby, Giolito, and Sin Singer all in a range that could do really well. And you want to try to get some bats in. I don't think it makes sense in this slate because you're going to have to stack like Minnesota and Pittsburgh or Minnesota and Milwaukee just to get Nola in. And unless you're dropping down to like, um, really, really cheap SP2 like Crawford, Fetty, or Mayer. Final game we have is Padres and Giants. Uh, Blake Snell and Logan Webb. Both pitchers are decent, but they're against decent offenses here. I think I like Webb or Snell, but he walks a lot of people. Webb just isn't having the season that he normally is, so he's in my no interest category. So I think the Padres would be the top leverage stack because if um, Webb does pick up some ownership here, and then San Francisco. I, again, I think they're both just leverage plays here. Um, late night hammers, if you want to stack either side of it, both pitchers are vulnerable. Um, both pitchers could be okay in a GPP, but I think, again, let's just hammer the mid-range. Gossman, Kirby, Giolito, Singer, um, and um, and go with that. So, like I said, um, check back to the comments. Or like After like 12 p.m. today, I will try to figure out um, – who the cash and GPP stacks and I'll just like um, list them down in the comments for you and the other core bats that I'm going to have in there. Um, so sorry about that, but we'll get that up to you today. Um, also check back around 630. If we have any weather issues, we'll post that for you too. So um, if you have any other questions or comments, put them in the chat below and um, I always appreciate your feedback, um, especially you know, getting us some um, thinking about, the, the pitching situation and making sure that we take um, into consideration that some of these upper um, more expensive bats haven't been uh, as good recently. So, you know, that's one thing that we really, really um, need to think about today. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, we we're able to, um, you know, we'll talk about that. So I appreciate that. Um, so, Thanks for reaching, reaching out, uh, Richie, on that one. And uh, again, uh, please like the video if it's helped you out. Um, subscribe to our channel so you know when our videos come out. We're going to have tons of content with the college football e EPL coming out. There's a slate today, so Gator Guys got one on that. So don't be caught off guard. It's not just weekend thing. There's actually midweek games because of the World Cup break. They're going to have some double game weeks um, coming up. So uh, pay attention for that. Um, NFL is coming up, all these cool things. So thanks again for watching. I'm MegaRoto31, and we will see you next time.